everybody get excited. Congratulations, that was an awesome best of three. I can't Thank even you. imagine the stress you were under. Oh, uh, it was crazy. Just cause it's like, you're going through it and the game plans and it's like before uh, top four it's like i'm prepping for nathan and i'm like okay i've like flow charted this entire game and then someone tells me oh it's gamma's ancient power and i'm like i gotta redo it all and then <laughs> and then you see zag and he's doing well i'm like okay okay maybe i can do this maybe and do this because um I don't wait his what had ancient power with, uh, and Elise. what his what had ancient power i gotta redo it all i've like flow charted this entire game and then someone tells me oh it's gamma's ancient power and i'm like I gotta redo it all and then <laughs> and then you see zag and he's doing well i'm like okay okay maybe i can do this maybe and do this because um i built i was using this team with uh chuppa and elisa shout out to them and chuppa played him in swiss and he knew some of his sets so it's like he had grass knot on the nihiligo for this matchup oh and because, we never saw that yeah and because i knew that going in i was able to avoid that and like, I think that's what caught him off guard when I finally went with the Venudon mode game three. And that just kind of like. That's actually a really big unspoken thing about VGC that it doesn't really get talked about outside like the high level play. Um, the more friends you have in VGC, the more connections you have and the more likely you are that if you are to top cut a tournament, you just have more information. And that's a huge advantage that a lot of people advocating for open team sheets are, you know, very much like pointing out when they say, hey, I want open team sheets. Uh, but as someone who doesn't like open team sheets, I will admit that that is a huge flaw in the system that if you talk to people uh, and, you know, socialize, you end up with a bigger advantage in the game, which let's be real, we're competitive Pokemon players, none of us socialize. It's so hard to recover from that. So let's talk about your Venusaur because I yeah. think throughout the whole day, like top eight, your Char your GMAX Charizard was really great getting rid of Gothitelle. Then in top four, Venusaur secured you those wins yeah. in that set. So. Yeah, Venusaur was huge for him. This set, you have to kind of decide between those two. And that's funny because Venusaur dropped off the face of the earth when Charizard came back, and now it's back again. And Venusaur. So, what was behind your decision making? Honestly, Nihiligo is so scary. Like, did you see how little that Max Quake did to it? Yes, I, we actually noted that. We're like, that seems like for four times super effective. That right. didn't seem like enough. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's like. You can know. tell Gavin's still so, shook. Like, he just won. His adrenaline's pumping. Nihiligo is already hard enough. I gotta like respect it, even though I've never seen the Pokemon before. But I know if I don't, it's gonna screw me over. But I, I loved having both the Charizard and the Venu to kind of balance each other out. It actually reminds me a lot of VGC 2014. Back then, I used both Mega Charizard and Mega Venusaur, and so it kind of felt like that, where it's like you kind of like rotate through both. It's almost like having like a double Mega team, or it's like sometimes you bring neither, and you just. Have I miss double Megas. On. Those were fun. It turns out those are restricted Pokemon as well. And poor little, you know, Mega Blastoise and G Max Blastoise are just he's yeah. cheering along on the side with his his friends there. Uh, yeah. The adjustments I, I'm I'm wondering with the uh, with the Grim Snarls on both ends, they were pretty important in the yeah. sets with light screen reflect you know whatever and then both of you opted well i guess we didn't see all yours but mm -hmm. we both opted to not lead grim snarl in game three and yeah. it was actually a massive difference because everything was actually doing the intended amount of damage it was supposed <laughs> to be because there were no screens all right Cal. Field. so like what was the decision behind uh you know not leading grim snarl let's be real the current amount of damage that's too much honestly what it was was just I wanted to change things up. I thought that he was like on the verge of making a like a successful adjustment and that he was going to hard read me and punish me and capitalize on because I was watching him play and it's like and it's like I was like he's gonna change it up. If this this is the moment to go Venusaur Groudon, mainly because I thought too he'd be That's another thing that a lot of people don't take in consideration before they go to VGC events. Um your opponent adjusting in the best of three is actually kinda like, it's something that you, you have to think about. There's a mind game in Team Preview that a lot of people just don't acknowledge um, when they're talking about VGC for, you know, best of three events. So, in in my first event, um, I had a win and in match versus Colin Heyer at this MSS um, in Chicago. And I was, um, what was I doing? I was consistently leading off with, like, Tapu Lele Garchomp and, like during the entire like tournament um and by doing that i was able to secure a lot of ko's like my my life orb tapu lele was able to like one shot a lot of things on his lead like i was able to get rid of garchomp and i believe he had i forget what the other pokemon was but like i, I was doing so much damage at moonblast so in game two um 
I, even though I had never played Colin Hire before, he was a known person to me because I had watched old VGC VODs before going to my first tournament. And I go, this guy's smart. He has a Celestila in the back. He's leading off with Celestila, uh, to which I actually switched up my lead. And this is VGC 2017, so we had Z moves. Uh, I had Z Overheat uh, Talonflame, or Z Flare Blitz Talonflame. And I actually led off with that. Um, and like I, that was just like a huge thing I had to do. And it, it, and it turned out, yes, he did end up switching out into the Celestila on lead to deal with the lead Tapu Lele. Uh, and I was, I didn't actually, I wasn't actually able to pick up a KO with Max Flare because he immediately switched back into the Gigalith, but I doubled into it because Max, um, uh, not Max Flare, uh, Inferno Overdrive into Moonblast was enough to pick up the KO on the Gigalith. So like, I made a safe play, but I also made a very aggressive read in team preview. And that's something that a lot of people just don't acknowledge when they're like giving you advice for tournaments. So if you know your opponent well enough, if you've played them before, Try to get in their head when it comes to team preview. Least likely to respect it in game three because Venus or Groudon, if you're leading that, you're gonna be trying to hit some sleep powders. Not in this game, but most of them, well, I hit it once, but most of them, <laughs> you're, that's your main game plan. So it's like, after missing a sleep powder game two, who wants to go for clicking sleep powders game three? My logic. So I decided, let's just go in. <laughs> and now this is your third regional championship. Yeah. All, all on the West Coast. What's with the West Coast? I know you're from the this time zone, <laughs> but what's with the West Coast power buff for you? It is. It really is a sleep thing. I'm not. I'm not even. I'm not even gonna lie. Like, I'm running on low sleep for me, and it's like seven hours, and it's like you're in an Airbnb and everyone's prepping, and you're going to bed at 11:30, and it's still not enough to get the eight hours or whatever. And it's like, ugh. no, it's like on the East Coast, it's like I had a solid like four hours or something. It's like, no, can't do it. Like anything beyond like a certain threshold, I can't do it. Also, the West Coast is the best coast, uh, but like regardless, just because it rhymes thing. doesn't mean it's true, Gavin. Uh, I feel like that, that is good news for everybody watching at home that uh, the key to success is a good night of sleep. It really is. Like, sleeping Big well true. is the best thing you, you can sleep do. well, you play so, well. You That's just a fact. You want to yeah. anyone who helped you, you know, accomplish this I goal? Wanna, I want to thank Elisa for all the help and support this weekend. Chuppa for going over my matchups. And a big, big shout out to Tud Nation. Four out of eight top cuts and taking the win. Let's go. All right. Congratulations to Gavin, your Vancouver regional champion. That's huge for Gavin. Congrats, dude. All right, let's talk about uh, the results. I just watched uh, the top four matches. I sort of skimmed through them and then watched the interview with Gavin um, just to get prepared to talk about this uh, because this is a pretty big event. Uh, attendance, I believe, is one of the higher ones. 117, oh wow, that isn't as high as I thought it was. Well, I guess it's also outside of the US. Typically, US events are a little bit bigger. Actually, let me see. What was it? Because Secaucus, that was like 200, right? 138, what's the cap this season? That feels strangely low. Anyways, still, you know. Uh, so let's just start from the top. I guess we'll start from the top here because those are the matches I watched. Uh, Jean-Marc, shout out to you. You're the, you're the cool dude. I met you at a tournament. You used to wear a stack attack, a plushie as a hat. Um, very solid team, obviously. You know, Zacian, Kyogre, Incineroar, Rillaboom, uh, Grimstar, Zapdos. This is basically standard wet dog. Sometimes you see Zapdos, sometimes you see Regieleki, sometimes you see Thunderous, but every time you see fun and you see results. Uh, so yeah, I don't really have much to say about his team. Uh, Zapdos was definitely super, super important in your matchup versus Gavin, uh, but unfortunately you kind of got shut down with how specially bulky the Groudon ended up being um, with the consistent parting shots and spirit breaks and light screens. You had to lean so, I, you played it perfect in my opinion, but you had to lean so hard into Zapdos that him being prepared for it was just not great for you. So that I, I feel, you know, I feel you on that one. Sometimes you can play everything right and still end up uh, losing. And that's, I think, what happened there. It was just kind of a hard, hard matchup to beat. Uh, Nathan Ortiz, Cortex VGC, uh, running the Curum White, Calyrex Shadow, Talonflame, uh, Sableye, uh, Urshifu, Dark, and Ditto. This team is the definition of hyper offense. I have nothing really big to say about it. We did see him bring the Ditto to the final match um, that he played in the tournament versus Zach, uh, and it ended up copying a Grimmsnarl, which isn't optimal. Obviously, you want to copy usually one of the restricteds. I'd imagine he was hoping for the Calyrex Shadow or something, uh, or even the Nihiligo. That'd be very useful, uh, but. Still, I mean, the team is a very uh, straightforward nature. We saw Iron Ball Trick on the um, Iron Ball Trick on the Sableye, which is actually a very interesting way of dealing with things that could be faster than you. Because you know, we tend to just see Tailwind plus, you know, Kyurem Dynamax. But uh, seeing Iron Ball as a secondary option is super interesting. Cap is one sixty. Okay, 
uh, we see uh, Zach who got second here. So Galio, uh, so Galio, Calyrex Shadow, Rotom Heat, Tapu Fini, Grim Snarl, and the Hiligo. Uh, we didn't actually see the. We didn't see if the Calyrex Shadow had Bulldoze or not. However, we did see it had Pollen Puff and that it was Choice Specs Tapu Fini. That was really interesting. Um, I'd imagine the Calyrex Shadow probably does have Bulldoze somewhere. I didn't get to see it though. Uh, Bulldoze, you know, plus Solgaleo sign that we've seen before. It's a very fast Bulldoze. It's unstoppable with Fake Out. You would need to like will o -Wisp, not will o -Wisp, Thunder Wave or like Scary Face it somehow and get it to like minus two speed and then deal with it to stop that. Uh, but still, you know, that's the thing. We also saw Sucker Punch on Grimmsnarl as a secondary option for activating that uh, weakness policy, and that was very solid. Specs Finny, I think, is very cool uh, because it's... Uh, Specs Finny is one of the few things that you can go up against a Dynamaxed Kyurem and come out the other side, like, feeling like it did something super, super important to that. Like, usually it's just like, okay, I stopped the Tailwind and Ozation KOs. I think that Specs Finny was absurdly important for the Kyurem matchup that he just played. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, obviously, you don't want to take a freeze dry, but I think you might be able to calc to live that with Finny. It's so bulky. But yeah, Specs Finny is interesting. Uh, it's very good in the Grim Snarl because two Moonblasts should always KO, I think even with screen since you are Specs. Uh, and a lot of them are carrying more physical defense to make sure they can take the Behemoth Blade behind Reflect. So, uh, Also the Nihiligo, very interesting. We saw Power of Meteor Beam. I'd imagine it had Sludge Bomb because we did see a Max Ooze once. Protect, I think, was revealed, and I don't know what the last move was. I think Gavin said it was Grass Knot. That's absurd because Grass Knot will let you one-shot uh, opposing Gastrodon. Uh, actually, maybe not. I don't know the calc on that, but it's in the Hiligo. It hits like a truck. I'd imagine it comes pretty close. Uh, that's also very good versus opposing Groudon since many Groudon rely on Charizard to actually do a lot of the heavy lifting. So they usually won't Dynamax the Groudon. So not only can you one-shot uh, Charizard with plus one Meteor Beam, because that's the standard if you're running um, uh, Power Herb, but also you can deal major damage if you manage to pick up that KO with plus two uh, Grass Knot. So I think that's very interesting there. I actually really like that. I want to look into the Hiligo now. Uh, we see, though, Gavin Michaels the winner. Uh, Gavin was actually running Lunaldon, a in a, 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 an archetype that is heavily slept on. We saw Wolfie run it at the Secaucus regionals, and we've seen it top cut a few other regionals, but dude like it's it's literally a t the reason that people sleep on it so hard is calyrex shadow exists incinera exists we have so many dark types dark types basically run the format at the moment uh and yet it still manages to do stuff because you go into the you go into the matches saying i am almost never gonna dynamax my lunala it will click trick room it will click meteor beam and it will click wide guard and that's what it does best and honestly it's very hard to edge it out of that niche next to groudon it's covered pretty well because you deal with things like incinera very easily the bulk up groudon in this team was kind of crazy i didn't expect that lefty's bulk up was super cool um, and yeah, Lunala always shows up late in formats, so that's that's something you have to take into consideration. Uh, we see uh, Incineroar, one would imagine, is pretty standard. Uh, the Venusaur, we didn't see an item confirmation on. I thought it was Assault Vest for the longest time because I never saw a Life Orb go off on it. Um, but it could be Koba Berry or Sash or something. Uh, it just ate, hits like a champ with that Grim Snarl screens up. We saw Grim was pretty much just standard screen Spirit Break stuff. Um, and the final Pokemon Charizard, we didn't see in any of the matches that I watched. Uh, but one would imagine if the Life Orb isn't on the Venusaur, the Life Orb is going to be on the Charizard. If not that, a Charty Berry. And yeah, this is wacky. Uh, it's it's not so wacky that you wouldn't expect it to top cut a tournament, but it's wacky enough to see Lunala win the whole thing. And at that, a large tournament, a 138 per, 117 person tournament, that's super cool. Let's uh, briefly go over the rest of the teams. Number five, we see um, whew, that's kind of cool. Uh, double grass type rather than electric type on wet dog. Uh, we see Palkia Calyrex with Gothitelle picking up in usage, getting both 6th and 7th. Justin, it looks like he dropped. Was Justin the one that ran the Alchemy? It was it was Alex and someone else. I forget if Justin was that someone else. Yeah, uh, Justin has dropped the Alchemy for, uh, what is it? Justin has dropped his Alchemy for Tabu Fini, which honestly, better fairy type in my opinion. You also, you know, Here's the, here's the thing, Alchemy does two things. It's Decorate and it blocks Sleep. Tapu Fini does half of those things, but it hits a lot harder. Um, we see Eternatus from John, who 
uh, which apparently is just absurd. And I see the possibility of the sacred lead. If that's, let me know if that's Spex Eternatus with AV Thunders. I would love to see that if that is the sacred lead. Um, we see Palkia and Zacian, uh, sort of a hyper offensive team, but we do see a Celesteela, possibility of Wide Guard, possibility of Power Herb, who knows. Uh, we see Wet Dog with Shedinja, another tried and true archetype. Once again, we see um, Palkia, Calyrex, and Gothitelle, but this time it's the Alchemy team. This is the third tournament in a row this team has top cut, so Alchemy is a legit VGC Pokemon now. No one can tell me otherwise, that's three in a row. That's all it takes. Uh, we see Fiona here with uh, Calyrex, Reshiram, another very solid archetype. Arcanine actually got 13th here, and at that, next to a Lugia. The two poster childs of mediocrity top cut a tournament, and that's very cool. So big ups to Josh Ferris. He used something out there. It might not look out there. You know, if you put two fingers over the Lugia and the Arcanine, uh, it, it looks like a standard team. And you're like, ah, that's probably like a like a Kyogre and a, an Incinera down there. But no, it's not. It's something a little bit more interesting. So yeah, um, Arcanine, I would assume, has the option for fast Will-O-Wisp, Snarl, and also has a better Zacian matchup. So that's probably why. Uh, we see a, a Lolan Executor and a Lolan Marowak. So that's kind of cool. Uh, a Lolan Marowak, obviously a very good Trick Room Pokemon, able to take max lightnings like they're nothing because it absorbs it, redirects it away from the two very electric weak Pokemon on the side of the screen. Uh, obviously, there's other forms of redirection in Tapu, uh, not Tapu, uh, in, in DD Female, uh, and also two grass types. So this just looks like a ver a team that like knows what it wants to do. Gary is like, look, I'm going to go Trick Room in certain matchups, and the Alola Maroc is going to come, it's going to come to 99% of matches because electric types are just absurdly common in this format. So yeah, uh, we see just like sort of a hyper offensive Dialga uh, Kyogre team here. Uh, we see... Zacian, Calyrex, another team that you tend to see once in a while. Zacian Dialga is kind of interesting because it hates Groudon, but they have like three Groudon answers here, so that makes sense. Uh, we see standard Wet Dog with a couple of, you know, things a little different. Devin, shout out to Devin, uh, a, a true friend of the channel. Uh, we see Calyrex Ice plus Palkia, uh, Incineroar, Porygon 2, uh, Landorus, and a Tapu Koko. I don't know what the set, what set the Tapu Koko is. It could be AV, it could be Specs, but all I know is that it's fun. So yeah, we see Joe running the Joe team, AKA the. Well, there's no Kieran White in top eight, so Joe running the Joe team. I can't make a joke there. <laughs> uh, we see Kevin here, Babiri.net. Shout out to you. You run a very cool website. Uh, running Lunala and Zacian, which I actually think is a very solid archetype. When I ran Lunala and Zacian, I also had a, an Araquanid on my team. So yeah, very cool. Uh, Aaron running uh, Lunaldon, very similar team to Gavin, uh, except Gavin doesn't have a Gastro. Gavin's got the Venusaur. I think that's the difference. Yeah, Gavin's got the Venusaur. Um, Marcus running Wet Dog. Uh, another Lunal, dude, Lunaldon picking up. It's really picking up. There is a lot of Lunaldon representation here. We actually see a ho -Oh in top uh, 32. Um, we're getting close to 32 second here. Uh, ditto. See, uh, Rinia's son, actually, surprisingly, but what'd they drop? What, what's different here? Oh, yeah, Rinia's son doesn't have Thunderous. I think that's the thing. So, yeah. So, that's cool. Uh, we see, uh, Zacian, Calyrex, Incineroar, Rillaboom, uh, Thunderous and Blastoise. I would imagine this Thunderous is probably support Thunderous because there isn't really too much support going on on this team. And also it has the possibility of Rain Dance for the Blastoise. Uh, Logan Hirsch here uh, running Rinya Sun but with Thunderous now. Uh, we see Alex Label or Labelle with um, Calyrex Groudon, standardish sort of Groudon team beyond that. Uh, no Charizard though, which is pretty interesting. Donald Smith, Duty. <laughs> Uh, running uh, once again, dude, Calyrex, Palkia, Gothitelle, that's such a hype team that's actually picking up in usage. We see Lunaldon again with uh, Chepa here, uh, and we see a, another uh, Calyrex and Groudon team with sort of a standard build. But yeah, I think this is super interesting. Lunala is showing up late in the format as it always does. Uh, oh wait, there is, I forgot, there is a Kyurem here. There is a Kyurem. It does beat Joe. But yeah, uh, this has been a very diverse Vancouver Regionals, and at that, a very fun Vancouver Regionals, uh, because we saw a lot of cool stuff, we saw a lot of fun matches, and overall, I think it has been a, uh, I would call it a success. Great as a viewer, great as a player from I imagine. I saw no one complaining about how it was run, so that's awesome. And uh, the commentary was on point, so yeah. 
Uh, overall, I thought this was fun. If you guys are watching on YouTube and you enjoy, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one.